Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about all of the latest and the greatest in PlayStation 4 homebrew news and much, much more. Today, I wanted to talk about a discovery that I made actually a couple of months back, and it really starts right over here on PS Dev Wiki. So I noticed that this page had this section that was titled Button Combo Menus. And inside of this page, there was a number of different button combos that you could use on a PlayStation 4. Now, I absolutely love secrets that's typically hidden in different console hardware where maybe, you know, you can grab your controller and you can press a certain number of buttons and maybe do things like activate staff mode or get out of a kiosk mode. I did this stuff when I was a kid and I absolutely love this stuff today. So looking at a couple of the options here, they had this one, which was the exhibition show mode. So this toggles the exhibition mode on a test kit PS4. So I don't have a test kit PS4, so I can't try this one. This one right here is just listed as more information. I'm not exactly sure what all this does. There is a staff mode. So this is an example of those that maybe it was a demo kiosk or something of that nature. So you could enter into the staff mode, which I'm sure you could do things like maybe HDMI settings or display resolution, things of that nature. Then there is this OMSK version which again is typically a display kiosk. So something that you may see inside of like a Walmart or a GameStop. And then there was this logo in copyright info. So in this example, they refer back to a Twitter post that says in the information menu for any application, if you press these buttons, it will show a logo in a copyright information. So not that interesting, but something that definitely I'd like to try in just a moment. And then there is system information. So this shows additional information on the system information screen than what we may be used to. Okay, so this is a nice little image right here. Okay, so definitely it tells a lot more than just the standard, I don't know, what is it, five fields that we typically get when we go to system information. And there is a retail version, or if you have a debug console, there is the store information. So basically, this is just the Konami code that most of us, at least if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you may be familiar with. So this display store information must have accessed PSN store before for anything to show up. This one I can't actually try on my test console, but I can at least try the system information one and as well as the logo and copyright info and let's see what else we've got then there is a web browser font submenu so in the web browser settings press this sequence right here and it unlocks a font submenu that would be pretty cool to go check out and then there is debug settings on a non-store mode so this unlocks debug settings which we typically have access to that through the jailbreak. And it says this without store mode enabled. And then there is a Netflix extra menu, which is open up Netflix and open up the settings tab and press this combo. So that could be interesting as well. Anyway, there is a couple of different button combo menus that this guide points out, but I'd really like to pass the question off to you. Is there more of these combos that may be documented right here? If so, definitely let me know. Put them down into the comments below. Okay, so we've got a couple of these that we can go and try. So let's go ahead and I'll switch over to my PlayStation 4 and let's give these a whirl. Okay, so we are going to begin with the easiest one first and that's just displaying the logo and the copyright information. So I'm going to pick Dying Lot 2. And we're going to go down into the information. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and we are going to press triangle, square, and then the options button all at the same time. 
Okay, there it is. So we get PS4 logo and just some copyright information. Okay, let's try it again here. And there is exactly what we get. Okay, so that's kind of a softball win here. Not sure how helpful that is, but still very interesting to know that that is available. Let's try out the web browser one. So go into my web browser and I'm gonna go up to settings here. And now I need to press L1, R1, L1, R1, L2, R2, L2, R2, square, triangle, options, L3, and R3. And there we go. We have a font menu, and I can change the font here to like large, small, or medium. And I guess that would work with the different types of pages. I'm not going to really explore on the web right now, but... That's at least how we can bring that up. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time here. And there we go. We have a font menu that just popped up again. So just change this thing to medium. And yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing a lot of changes in the font, in the font size there. But maybe that's just simply because I'm not actually browsing the web and trying some different types of pages. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's try the system information one. So let's go down into the system and then system information. And it is L1, L3 triangle for seven seconds and then D-pad up plus options. And there we go. So I can see that we have added in the UDP version, the release build, the security repository path, SDK internal build number, some middleware version information, VSH repository path, framework version, and then a NPXS24 Zero, zero, zero to the one and then the five. Okay, so that's actually very interesting that at least you can activate that. And so while these button combos so far isn't probably that useful to the everyday average PS4 user, I think there is a couple of options that's in the accessibility settings that could potentially help. So let's go ahead and head over there now. Let's go into our settings here and then accessibility. And we'll begin with this one, which is just called Zoom. So let's enable the Zoom. And it says right here that in order to zoom in and to zoom out, it's basically just pressing the PlayStation button plus square gives us a zoom, or we can cancel out of that zoom by just pressing circle. We can move around with the D-pad. So let's give this a shot. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here first. Okay, nice zoom in effect there. I'm moving around with the D-pad and I'm canceling with the circle button. And then let's take a look over here in that same accessibility menu for button assignments. So the button assignments I think is something that a lot of people skip over. But this actually allows you to change your controller button assignments. It says that this doesn't work with some controllers, and those are primarily any of the third-party controllers. So if you're like me, one of my guiding principles is, is that you should always buy Sony branded or Sony official controllers and never deal with any of the third-party controllers. So let's go into that and let's see what it looks like. Okay, we're going to enable it, and now we're going to customize. Basically, you can just remap any of the buttons to anything that you would like for them to be. So let's go in, let's take one of these, and we'll press the X button to go into it. And okay, there is the menu that it gives us. So we could basically remap the triangle button to any of the PlayStation 4 buttons that's available. Okay, and so that is going to do it for this one. Again, I remind you to leave a comment down below 
if maybe the PS Dev Wiki is missing some of the different combos that you already know about. Is there any other secret features that you're aware of that deals with the Sony PlayStation 4 buttons and button combos? Let me know. I'd love to learn. So thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, give me a comment down below, and always hit the subscribe button if you want more PlayStation 4 news. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!